Hello Sagittarius and welcome to your November Insights video. Uh, this month, instead of me talking you through the lunar cycle, like I usually do, I am going to focus on the big shifts of Jupiter entering your sign and the nodes shifting from the Leo Aquarius axis to the Cap Cancer Capricorn and Uranus is backtracking into Aries because these are shifts that will um, be very prominent for us over the coming cycles as you know Jupiter's going to be in your sign for 13 months the nodes will be um, transiting these signs for the next 18 months so the shifts that happen this month will be affecting us long term so instead of just talking about the upcoming four weeks you can revisit these videos um, as the cycles progress and, and things move ahead to see what areas of your life are being amplified and expanded by the cosmos at this time. So let's talk about Jupiter first coming home, coming to your temple, the temple of Sagittarius, the cosmic archer, the truth seeker, the teacher, the visionary. Very, very exciting times. Jupiter has been moving through Scorpio in your 12th house since last October, really calling you into deep diving into all of your subconscious self-sabotaging mental processes, asking you to clear up your karmic cause, your karmic ties. Really, he could have really been churning some old stuff up during this period for you. It could be a time when you know you felt like you've needed to go in, you've needed to really work with your intuition and your spiritual practices to clear what needs to be cleared. Um, so that now Jupiter is in your sign, he moves here on the 8th of November and will remain until December 2019. So now he's in your sign you can really align yourself with your destiny. You can really take the maximum benefit of all of this buoyant, optimistic energy that is coming forward for you. And we know that you've had a really difficult few years, Sagittarius, particularly those of you with planets in the last degrees. You've had Chiron squares, you've had Saturn going through your sign up until December last year. So this is a welcome, shift in energy for you. This is an expansion of all of your natural tendencies towards fate, towards synchronicity, towards optimism, towards things always working out. Um, this is a time when you can feel like you are blessed by a lucky star in a way that in, in, in a way that you, you are. You know, Jupiter's going to come and he is going to help you to magnetize those things which will align you to the truth of who you are. You, Sagittarius, who are always on the search for deeper truth, for deeper meaning, this can really illuminate your pathway towards that truth and towards... Um, the things and the people and the opportunities that will support you in your growth, in your endeavours. So it's a very, very beautiful energy and your natural tendency to always be in the right place at the right time, your tendency towards um, synchronistic happenings and divine blessings will also be amplified at this time. But we do have to be aware that, of course, it will expand all of your shadow tendencies as well because Jupiter inflates whatever he touches so although he's in your sign which is very buoyant and optimistic he will also exaggerate your desires for freedom your tendency towards excess and hyper positivity <laughs> so it's important that we do also keep our feet on the ground during this period 
and that we also recognize that what might be true for us, you know, because your truth is so important and integral to who you are, Sagittarius, that although that might be what feels good for you, your truth won't necessarily be the same as other people's truths. And this can be particularly a thing that you become aware of during Mercury retrograde because he's going to be retrograding in your sign from the 16th of November to the 2nd of December and you know he won't leave his shadow until the 21st till the winter solstice so you may become very aware of this tend these tendencies within yourself during that period and it's giving you a chance to rewire those old patterns so that you can really benefit from the blessings that are coming your way over the next 13 months so as long as you can um, walk a pathway of balance this can be a really really beautiful beautiful period for you we also have the nodes shifting signs they are moving from the Leo Aquarius axis where they have been since May 2017 um, and of course this is where the eclipses happen this is where you know particularly the Aquarius house has been where all of the um, shifting and changing has been taking place over the summer with Mars retrograde, with the big lunar eclipse. So you've been actually doing some deep work around your belief patterns because the nodes were on your third and ninth house axis, the axis of the um, logical mind and the higher mind, the Gemini and Sagittarius houses of the birth chart. So you've been really working on knowing what is true for you. You've been really working on letting go of old programs that stop you from being your authentic self and discovering who you are and you know what your vision is for your life. So as they shift, they come into Cancer and Aquarius and um, Cancer and Capricorn. So the South Node, the point of release the point of letting go for the next 18 months for you Sagittarius moves into your second house the south node joins Saturn and Pluto who have been here you know bringing the lessons of the second house to your attention for quite some time Pluto's been here since 2009 Saturn's been here since last winter solstice so nearly a year now and they are really calling you to examine the Taurian qualities of self-worth, self-value and how you utilize your financial and emotional resources, you know, how you can use your talents and gifts to lay a solid, abundant foundation for your life. And we've talked about this quite a lot, so we won't go so much into it again here. But what it is important to focus on is the North Node, your point of evolutionary expansion for the next 18 months, shifts from that ninth house of belief systems of spirituality and higher vision into the eighth house, the Scorpio house of um, intimacy, of rebirth and regeneration, of creation and destruction. So we're in Scorpio season now, so we're very much in those energies, you know, they're very amplified, that energy of understanding that there needs to be endings before there can be new beginnings. So these are lessons that you will be learning as the node transits the 8th house of your birth chart. And Cancer and the 8th house are both very, very emotional, sensitive, watery energies so this can be a time when you have to really acknowledge your need for emotional connection acknowledge your need for intimacy and support and coming together from other people so this can be a fine balance to walk because you've got jupiter in your sign you know amplifying that need freedom freedom expansion exploration and then cancer and scorpio the eighth house intimate connection stability, security. So we need to find some kind of middle ground here over the coming cycles for you Sagittarius. We need to perhaps realise that we 
can have both, you know. We can have a secure foundation for ourselves and still allow ourselves the freedom that we need to explore. These two options don't have to be mutually exclusive. We can find a way of weaving them together in a way that supports you in your wholeness and all of your needs and desires. So that's something to contemplate on over the coming um, 12 and 18 month cycles. It's interesting to reflect back. Jupiter would have last been in your sign in 2006. So let's have a look back and see what manifested during that time, what the main themes were. The nodes were last in these spaces of your birth chart um, in 2000 and, and 2001. So have a little look at how your relationships were, how your emotional connection with other people were at that time, how you were dealing with your finances and material resources. Take a look back and know that these lessons, these themes will crop up again during this period. So the other important thing to think about this month is Uranus, the storm god, he moved into your sixth house, your Taurus house, on the 15th of May this year, and he's been kind of liberating you, shaking you up from old routines, old patterns, old um, constructs and structures that may be um, feeling too constrictive for you. So you may have been feeling the need to change your job or change your life in ways that allow you to feel more free. So that combination, you know, with the, the second house of resources and finances being activated and the desire for change in the, the work and daily routine sector could have been really calling you to kind of step onto your purpose and find ways of utilizing your gifts in order to create that sense of expansion that you need to really feel um, able to be yourself Sagittarius. So there's been a lot of um, upheaval in these areas recently, a lot of work to be done. And Uranus is going to come back into Aries. He's going to come back into your fifth house where he was during the years of 2011 up until May 2018. And he's, you know, it's almost like he goes back, okay, we need to revisit this area. We need to kind of make sure that we've learned these lessons. We've liberated ourselves fully in this area of our life. And the fifth house is the house of creative, authentic self-expression. So we have this theme going on, which is collective this month, but also, you know, extra significant for you, Sagittarius. So let's, this can be actually quite a nice energy for you because obviously a fellow fire sign, it's a fire house. So this can be a time when you start to feel less restricted and more inspired, you know, Aries goes, Uranus goes back in, okay, let's just stoke these fires of creativity. Let's just reawaken this individual potential of yours, this, you know, excitement and desire for life that you have. Let's stoke it up a little bit. So it can be nice, you know, it can be a nice transit where you can receive some more creative inspiration, some more downloads, which you can then begin to root in reality, which you can then begin to birth into the world and use to generate that abundance to build your foundations for the future. So it's an interesting time and a somewhat contradictory time for you as um, we're looking at these themes of freedom and intimacy and connection and solidity as opposed to this you know massive expansion so how can we really know how to use our truth in ways that help us to feel rooted. So I'm going to pick a card for you as well. From the Sacred Rebels Oracle by Alana Fairchild because, uh, well, Sagittarius, you're quite rebellious yourself, but Uranus is definitely a rebellious energy. 
and these cards are really supportive of the evolutionary journey of the soul I feel they're really supportive of you know giving us indication on where we can move forward on our life's purpose so let's pick a card for you to close the reading seeing the true you that could not be more perfect with Jupiter coming into your sign, into your first house, Mercury retrograding there, the node coming into your eighth house of deep soul diving. So this card is all about you knowing who you are. You know, she's looking into the waters there. She's looking at her reflection. She is looking deep into her soul. So she understands her own needs and her own motivations aside from the projections that other people um, place upon her, the roles, the conditioning that society projects upon her. And it's a time to ask, you know, who am I truly? What are my core desires? Jupiter is in my sign. If I could manifest anything, if I could bring any vision into being, what would it be and why? You know, why do I want the things I want? What is the underlying desire here? You know, if I want to create more money, perhaps money equals freedom to me. If I want to create more love, more partnership, perhaps partnership makes me feel secure so what is the underlying emotion that I am striving for at this time and how can I organize my life in a way that supports it coming into being so a beautiful beautiful time for you Sagittarius a welcome shift I am sure thank you so much for listening to me if you wish to connect with me further, you can click the links below this video that will take you to my Facebook and, yeah, to my Facebook pages and groups. I'm sending you so much love and so many blessings for this amazing new journey that you are embarking upon.